Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence here. We honor you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We just position ourselves to receive today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You know, in Acts chapter 13, it said, as they ministered unto the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke. For just a moment, just lift your hands and minister to the Lord with thanksgiving. Minister to the Lord with, an, with a gratitude and, and just start worshiping him out of your heart, out of, out of your mouth, just to glorify him. Hallelujah. Father, we set ourselves to receive today. Oh, we're so grateful, Father, that, that we get to hear your word today. We are honored to sit under this teaching today. We're honored. We turn aside. We turn aside from the business of life. We turn aside from the way we've been doing things. We turn aside from the things we've had going on in our lives. And, and Father, as we turn aside, I thank you that you will always speak. And as you speak, we will hear. And as we hear, we will obey. And as we obey, we will see great change. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor John, Sharon. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, the apostle of this house, senior pastor, founding pastor of this house, is, uh, has an opportunity that he's taken. Uh, it's a door of opportunity for him to go minister. And so Pastor Justin and I are going to just tag team for a minute. And we are going to pray for what he's doing right now in this day for that door of opportunity that's open for him to minister to a significant group of people. Right, Pastor Justin? Um, What Dr. Savell was asked to do, um, uh, do you remember remember who Sid Roth is? Um, Well, anyway, Sid Roth knew this church in Maryland, and it's a Jewish congregation. And they wanted a Gentile's perspective on covenant. And so Sid Roth recommended Dr. Savell to go to this church in Maryland to minister to an all Jewish church about covenant. And, and so, and so this is, we believe in this is a divine appointment. And, and this is part of what, what corporate prayer is about. And especially what we want you to hear is, is when we went to um, South Africa to, during their corporate prayer times, which which they have them on um, Tuesday nights. When we were there, it was Wednesday night, and they had Saturday uh, Saturday uh, around morning, whatever. But but the point was, is one of those sessions was nothing about just praying about Dr. Savell and Pastor John. So, and the things that they had in front of them, the things that they were preparing, which Pastor Sharon will get into some of those things this morning, I believe. But 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 it, it's just setting ourselves in agreement because just as they, as Pastor John said, as he. As he, as he receives, you know, we receive. As I receive, you receive. And as we all receive, we all come up to another level. And that, and that's what we're really talking about this corporate prayer. And that's what the importance of unity and not just praying different things and what you're praying out of here and, and, um, oh, I don't want to. So this is, uh, I, we're going to use this as an example right now of how we pray corporately. So what you're doing is just setting yourselves in agreement, and uh, I'm going to just pray a prayer, and then uh, Pastor Justin is going to pray a prayer, then we're all going to pray in the Spirit together, okay? So I'm just going to start off and say, thank you, Lord, for the open door that you've given Brother Jerry. This is a unique opportunity for him to go and minister covenant to a group of people, and we thank you, Lord, that as he preaches and teaches that the Word of God will come out of him with fire, with power. It will flow like a river, Father. And they will, and he will be so anointed and strengthened as he goes there. This will be one of the greatest meetings that he's ever had. Every, anywhere, anytime as he ministers to your natural-born covenant people, Father. So we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that the Word will have free course. I thank you the word will work and move swiftly. Father, we thank you that he operates in the seeing and the knowing. As he sees and as he hears, he will speak the mysteries of the kingdom. 
I thank you, Father, that as he has the, uh, the anointing and the, the ear to hear, I thank you that same anointing will be to release it. And I thank you that that congregation, that Jewish congregation, will have ears to receive it, ears to hear it. And thank you that it will pr- produce more open doors. It will produce more opportunities. I thank you that Dr. Savell's voice is a, a voice that is continuing to expand and increase and grow. Thank you, Father, that, 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 that voice is, is being, being, is being released across this, this nation, across the world. And I thank you that it is opening, bringing about open doors and other ministries and other things. This word of new doors and opportunities is, is being fruitful. And productive in those that hear it and apply it. I thank you for refreshing over him. That he is refreshed spirit, soul, and body. He is under the shadow of the, of the almighty. And I thank you that he is protected. He is far from any accidents or oppression. I thank you that angels bear him up. I thank you that he is always in the right place at the right time. Speaking the right things to the right people. We thank you for it. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Now let's all pray together in the Spirit. Sombrende shampran tokore vrembre. Lembrosha campro se prenti kimon tama yase. Lombrende se bregeto como sombrota kabaki kana. Shodrere se revendra mala coste kipaka. Yimando do se gele bregene yes kanama. No bore ste gira bala. Remendo doste che begasso cobrete che le brata. Ampra san prote prechisce trevi centralo. Le deghi socolo vrondesce. E le manda la dodo doste che ne mandra. Le bacaca to botesce. Scibaca momomo se ne mendre. Libidi roste bre ragazzo coro bondre mente. Scebe se che ne mondre batti chi le bro. Ramamba baba brebe be sembrenden do shaya yo bode gise gene bada ronde de seke jita kaba yo kobote dimando boste kine mentre bete pri baba ga son dromoto corre telebre de gene mana ga olo monde gere benen en gasa ka o shekeri biri gi sombrende se ne mana na bote ramandro bode sikine mana Thank you, Lord. Let's just give him thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers in advance. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you for the holy anointing that rests upon Brother Jerry. We thank you for the freedom to speak. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost that rests upon him, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for a great refreshing that comes upon him, Father. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Miss Carolyn, is there anything you want to add to that, ma'am? Hallelujah. Glory to God. This uh, this time of prayer and corporate prayer, well, uh, as we've been ministering over the last couple of nights, it's more difficult for you to get involved in corporate prayer if you're not involved in personal prayer. Because if you're involved in personal prayer, you come ready to pray. If you don't have personal prayer, then you come to get adjusted to pray. And if you're always coming to get adjusted to pray, then pretty much your adjustment is not to come pray. And so... And so it's important that you have a prayer life. Amen. Amen. You're allowed to say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Charles Finney says, Renewal usually spreads to the extent that people have the spirit of prayer. We know that Charles Finney was one of the greatest revivalists ever, right? That's what he said. I want to just read uh, something to you here. John G. Lake uh, said this. 
I saw, I sat and listened to that voice repeat that sentence for a half an hour. I said, my God, my soul begins to see the church is the generating power of God in the world. The church has been negligent in one thing. She has not prayed. The power of God out of heaven is what he said. Hallelujah. I'm going to hand over to my wife, Pastor Sharon, here in a minute. Brother Kenneth Hagin said, Why is it so important that we have the proper kind of prayer meetings in our churches? Because there is a move of God. There is a move of God. And God is wanting to restore the supernatural operations of His Spirit in our local churches. Without prayer, we are not going to have a restoration of the supernatural restoration in our churches. Kenneth Copeland prophesied and said this in 2009. I'm not going to read the whole prayer, but this is part of his prophecy. The prayer, the prayer, the prayer, the prayer that's gone forth, the prayer that is going forth. That's where the power release is. That's where the trigger to these things is. That's the way up. Release them in your church. And thus says the Lord your God. In the hour, these churches that are teaching and training people to pray, of which are on this, on this list, and many others also, those are the churches where the explosion and the Shekinah glory of God will be manifest first. The praying churches will walk in it first. And they'll say, my revival broke out over there. No, answered prayer broke out over there. Yes. Hallelujah. Brother Jerry Savell said in his trip to South Africa in 2016, 2018, Prayer is vital. God has, does nothing until somebody prays. Prayer is, is who welcomes the presence of God. If, if you truly want Him, then do whatever is necessary in prayer. Every major move of God has come on the wings of hunger and prayer. It doesn't take the whole church wanting it, uh, wanting it, but why doesn't the whole church pray and believe in it? A revival or mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit is a profound encounter with God that requires disciplined preparation, hunger, prayer, and believing. To think that we will have a mighty move of God without prayer is foolish. Hallelujah. And so these great, wonderful men of God have imparted into us over many years this that we bring to you. And as I have said from Thursday night, and Pastor Sharon is going to now take it from here. There is no right or wrong way to pray. There is, uh, in terms of the way you pray, although we have discovered that there are certain things that hinder powerful prayer. And there are certain things that facilitate powerful prayer. Yes. Now, I am, I am a more structured, I am a more uh, controlled person in my personality. Huh? <laughs> Pastor Sharon is a lot more exuberant. And she's a lot more audacious in the spirit. And... Uh, I'm saying that because the way that I operate is, is good. And the way that she operates is good. What you're about to touch, though, is the, is the spirit that God has placed in her that will activate you. And so we, rec we recognize that there are things that I can activate. Structure, order, teaching, 
the discipline of prayer, things like that. I can, I can organize it and I can establish it so that it can increase and intensify it. But Pastor Sharon has, a, has an ability through her personality and gifting and calling that God has given her to be an activator. So be ready to be activated. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor Sharon. Thank you. Thank you, baby. Well, this is wonderful. Like I said on Thursday evening when we began, I'm so at home here. It's, it's not surprising to me that I'm at home here. We have been walking with Miss Carolyn and Brother Jerry. We were ordained in, in 1997 in this auditorium. We were ordained. Pastor John and I were here with Bryn and Garth. They were much younger. And, uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's been a love walk, and that's what, why I feel so at home. It's because Pastor John and I have been loved by Brother Jerry and Miss Carolyn. We've been loved by Joe and Joyce, and we have been loved by Justin, Pastor Justin and Annette. Hallelujah. And so, it's good for me to tell you that we're at home here so that you can be at home in your heart. And, um, We've been in Word of Faith, planted in, at Rama in South Africa. We've been living by faith. Uh, just to give you some background about ourselves, Pastor John was born to pastors. His, his mum and dad were pastors in the Assemblies of God, and I was born to pastors in the AFM, which is John G. Lake's Roots. So we're both PKs. And uh, and uh, what I always tell my uh, our congregation back home, I'm a church girl. I love to come to the local church. I love the planted thing to be planted and to be faithful and to I get I get God's local church plan. I get it, and I don't understand other. Of my brothers and sisters that don't get it. Because every new creature, every born again one should get it. Because it's the plan of God. Local church is the plan of God. It's not the plan of man. The pattern of it is very clear. When Jesus writes, he writes to local churches at Thyatira, at Philadelphia, at Laodicea. When the Apostle Paul writes letters in the epistles, he writes to the church at Ephesus. Oh, yes. I see where you're going here this morning, Lord. Glory to God. Well, I need to. God is going to speak very seriously to some of you today. And he told me this last week that there's going to need to be some repentance. There's going to be need to be some repentance from looseness. Lightness. When it comes to your zeal for the house of the Lord. And I'll share some of that with you now. I just spoke to my heart. I'm building my local churches, Sharon. And I remember Dad Hagen saying that when he was alive. If you want to know what God is doing in the earth. If you want to know what God is doing in the earth, he is building strong local churches and teaching them to flow with the Holy Spirit. And the body of Christ has become light and loose. And they've responded. They've responded. God called it a word to me. He said, Satan's deviant plan. I belong to the church universal. Well, it may be different in America, but I tell you in South Africa, there is no honor for the Father God and for Jesus, for local church, love and life. Christians think they can just 
go where they want to go. Plant themselves, if you please. They don't go the way of God. They don't go the way of the word where God says, I will set you in. I will place you at it as it pleases me, is what it says in the book of Corinthians. In Deuteronomy chapter 12, and about five times in the book of Deuteronomy, God is preparing them for their promised land and saying, you shall seek the place that the Lord your God shall choose for you. And there you shall go. And there you shall bring your offering, your tithes. And there you shall rejoice you and your children. I am shocked at times at the looseness of my brothers and my sisters in how they plant themselves because of preference, convenience, and comfort. Those were three words the Lord gave me many years ago. My people plant themselves and they go to churches and places because it's comfortable for them, they prefer it, and it's convenient for them. My children like the the youth ministry over there. So off we go. Um, my husband likes, my wife likes. We need to understand that our planting is by God. We understood that. John and I understood that when we had little babies. God said to us, I plant you here and you will not leave. So when job offers came, we didn't even consider them because it would move us away from where God was planting us. We had a fear of God. We have it still. A fear of the Lord. An honor for God. And God said to me, there's going to be need to be some repenting. He said this to me on Friday, the 25th of October. There's going to need to be some repentance to get with God's plans and purposes for his church. When the corporate pattern is right, his glory will manifest in your personal life. The new creature gets a new nature and God plants him in a new environment, the local church. You are not called everywhere. God has a very specific plan for you because of his great love for you. He's not haphazard about where you think you can go because of your preference, your comfort, and your convenience. God has got a place for you to go. Just read here what he said to me. He said this on the 27th of October. He said, those in the body who are not going to allow themselves to be planted, who are not going to allow themselves to be planted in a local church by God himself at this time, will find themselves by their own choice not able to access the new door. That's it. Glory to God. There are two things in my life that I make my whole life. I did it for 20 years before God called us into the full-time ministry. In my local church is the prophetic word. And every message that came every Sunday morning in my church. Because my pastor was hearing from God during the week and seeking him for the words to bring to me. That's the local church way. The Lord said to me many years ago, my people are on information overload. They are watching all the programs on TV. They're going to every conference and every convention possible Every latest thing that they can hear. 
They are doing everything but what I expect them to do in their local church where they're supposed to come like sheep to feed. To feed in my pasture I have placed them in. To drink out of the cisterns and the living waters that flow in my local church. It's how God taught me. Anything else is lawless. It's not according to God's way. I wondered that's about that in the early years when God was training me how to be a planted one according to his word. And you would have me come to church when the doors opened and I couldn't wait to hear the words Jesus was going to speak to me through my shepherd. And at that, those days I had my notebook ready. I still got my notes when I was in my early 20s, list, making the notes of a, um, um, a speaker that my pastor had come into my church, not looking for other speakers. You can't possibly... You were not designed. You were not predestined to be part of every wonderful thing God is doing all over this planet. God did not create you. You are not going to miss out on anything if you planted properly. You feed properly in the local church. I still feed in my local church. I feed. I understand that I need to have the fivefold ministry still continue to bring me to maturity. I need the fivefold ministry of Brother Jerry and the prophetic word that he brings. I need the fivefold ministry and the, all the gifts that, that my spiritual leader, who happens to be my husband, but I need the gift that is in him to minister to me. Uh, we have a pastor. We have pastors. And I need the gift of the pastor, of the shepherd, of Pastor Christy to minister to me. And to Pastor Malusi must minister to me. Because I recognize that the That Jesus gave gifts. Jesus gave gifts, specific gifts for me. And not every gift in the world is for me. My feet stay in my house. Proverbs says that a loose woman's feet can't stay in her house. This is going to set you free. God said to me, there's going to be need to be some repentance before you can, because to be a powerful corporate prayer, you, you must be obeying the basics of God's word of being planted in a local church. I mean, I don't know how it happens in America, but I'll tell you, we see these women in South Africa. They don't even submit to a local shepherd. And they're all off praying and they intercessors. And I'm like, dear Lord, you don't, you're not even planted, but you are the intercessor of the hour with more power. I'm like, not near me, you, do, you don't. Give me a planted woman, a word of faith woman. A woman that loves her husband. I mean, I don't know how it is in America, but in South Africa, we have these groups of women. They don't even love their husbands. But boy, they pray. I'm like, what's up with that? It's not how he taught me. It's like, in the early days, I used to think, Lord, is it different for them than for me? You're not training me like that. No, no, I'm training you because you're listening to me. You're listening to me. you you're developing a prayer life with me. You're hooking up with me, the Holy Spirit inside you. And I'm telling you now, I'm not teaching you different for you. And I've got something for someone else. These are my ways and these are my patterns. That's it. I learned. I learned. Oh, and I'm still learning in my local church. I love the local church. I want to read something to you here. A spiritual house. A house of prayer. A household of faith. Glory to God. There's a coming of age now. And a maturity level 
that the head of the church, Lord Jesus, requires now. Jesus spoke to Brother Jerry and said to him, there's been a lot of word that's gone out and a lot of teaching. And I'm not going to work anymore as I used to. I used to just work with what I had. But there's been so much teaching and preaching go out in the earth. And I expect my body to come up to the level of the teaching. I'm expecting people, my church, to be walking in the things that they that have been taught to them. And there's coming in Heritage of Faith, South Africa, and in Heritage of Faith, Fort Worth, we are coming of age. There's a coming of age. It's not for nothing that there's the new door in 2020, and it's the 20th anniversary of our churches together. And that Brother Jerry said, this is a perfect time for this corporate prayer. And he thanked Pastor Justin for being sensitive to the Holy Spirit to invite us because God has had us on a quest for corporate prayer. Because he knew, even though our quest for corporate prayer would be powerful for ourselves, he knew there'd come a time when he put it in Pastor Justin's heart to get us so we can transfer it quickly. Quickly, 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 quickly. And God will do in one year here what it took us 10 years to do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the corporate prayer in this church will be explosive because it's going to come from planted people. Planted people. Brother Jerry's been teaching us on planted, 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 planted. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. We have the perfect example of, uh, uh, this is what I I share with our churches back home. We are lifers. L-I-F-E-R-S. Have a look at Brother Jerry. He's a lifer with Brother Kenneth Copeland. Brother Kenneth Copeland was a lifer with Oral Roberts. We are lifers. I was prepared to be at my local church for life. For life, we were so surprised when the Lord said to us, when the Lord said to us, we are going to call, I'm calling you to Brother Jerry. I mean, I must be honest with you, I got such a fright. I was like, I'm planted. I'm planted. I've always been like that. I'm planted. I'm planted. And Pastor John and I, even though we sensed in our hearts, we had already purposed in our hearts, if our pastor doesn't witness with it, we will stay until he does. Because God is honor bound with that kind of attitude to visit our pastor in the night time. I mean, that expression, I don't know how it is in America, but in South Africa, they say, we feel led to leave. Yeah, you, 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 it is. It's like lead. <laughs> I remember bro, Brother Mark Barkley, he's of our company, saying, this one com- family came and asked us to bless them. And they'd been with us for some years. And I said to the Lord, I think he was in the bathroom or something, in the shower or something. He said, Lord, why am I grieving? The Spirit of God said to him, This family are supposed to stay here. The children are going to make friends they should never make. They're going to marry people they were never supposed to marry. That's Brother Mark Barkley. I thought, Lord, that's the reason I've grieved so many times, because you're not supposed to go. I want to read you something here about Kenneth Copeland. He ministered at, at, a, at Brother Jerry's minister's conference. I've got it here under the section of the law of place. 
Brother Kenneth Copeland on the law of place. At Brother Jerry's Minister's Conference, October 2013, this is what he said. There are truths that God has, God has about the plan he has for your life. There is a grace place. In this very auditorium, he said these words. I transcribed it word for word. It may be where you are. It may be that you need to inquire of God and get to that place. You have a specific destination. He has a place and a plan for every member of the body of Christ. The thing that matters is that there is a designed place that was made for you and you were made for it. That place is your laughing place, your wealthy place, your manifestation place, your healing and prosperity was over there in another church. You were supposed to be a member of that church over there. I don't care if it is somewhere far away from where you are now. Most Christians are too afraid to pray and ask God in case they may have to go there. Because I will go where I want to go. And that Deuteronomy chapter 12 section. Moses was preparing people for the promised land. Because your planted place is your promised land place. And he's saying now when you get into the promised land. You will find a place which the Lord your God shall choose for you to go. And there you shall go. And there you shall bring. And then he makes this statement in the same chapter. He says you shall not do what seems right. In your own eyes. As you are doing today. Deuteronomy 12. 5 to 8. Shall we pull that scripture up? Out of the Amplified Bible. I want your eyes to see this. Deuteronomy 12. Chapter 12 verses 5 to 8. But you shall seek the place. Which the Lord your God shall choose. Out of all your tribes to put his name and make his dwelling place. And there shall you come. And there you shall bring your offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes. There you shall bring 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 the tithes. Then the place where you're planted. Hasabra asoneke esh makadabro senetika sheneska. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Malachi 3.10. Malachi 3.10. And there you shall eat. Your free will offerings. Your first of your herd and your flock. There you shall eat. Before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all to which you put your hand. You and your households. In which the Lord your God has blessed you. You shall not do according to all we do here this day. Every man doing whatever looks right in his own eyes. So Brother Copeland finishes with this. Most Christians are too afraid to pray and ask God in case they may have to move to go there. He intends for you to go wherever he tells you to go, just like Abraham. He told Abraham, you're going to go there. And there I'm going to bless you. He intends for you to go wherever he tells you to go. So he can release the blessing of Abraham and turn a waste place into a garden of Eden and live in it. Now, this was very powerful to me. It stayed with me all these years. You are going to get attacked by the devil in either place. But when you're in your grace place, then you have the grace to overcome the attack every time. When you're in your grace place, you're going to get attacked in both places. That's the place you're not supposed to be and the place you're supposed to be. But when you're in your grace place, Then you have the grace to overcome the attack every time. The problem with grace when you're not in your place is you are not believing 
for grace anyway. Because you're afraid for him to tell you what to do and where to go. But if you want to, the, you can go direct from present position to your right place without wasting time or getting wet. You are not called everywhere. This is, this, I tell you, if I was a church hopper, this would be setting me free round about now. Because it's the word of God. I would be repenting round about now. Right now. You know what repentance is? Simply this. It's changing your inner man to meet the will of God. It's changing your inner man. When you see the truth in God's word. Changing your inner man to meet the will of God. That's it. It's that quick. Hallelujah. Sure. I think we're going to all pray. We're going to just pray in the spirit. You're going to pray for yourself now as we pray. You're going to pray for your own plantedness. Your own plantedness. Because there's a very powerful statement that says you will receive in direct proportion that you allow yourself to be planted, you will receive. Um, Right. Sure. Let's just see here. There's a lot more that I'm going to get through. But he wanted to go there quickly today. You will reap from a local church. This This is what... Pastor Justin, this is what we put together for you. This is what we teach. This is what we've been teaching for 20 years. This is what's going to cause people to come. It's part of what's going to help you for people to come into maturity quickly. Come into maturity quickly. Hallelujah. It's not difficult just to switch. Repent. Repentance is not, I'm going to cry for three weeks and I'm going to put on a face. Repentance is internal. It's like, I see that God. I switch right now. I switch it. I change it right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! Yes. Yes, Lord. I change right now because I can. Because I'm a new creature. And I can. I can change and switch to the, the, your way right now. And so, where was I going here? You will reap. From a local church in direct proportion that you allow yourself to be planted. So if you, to, and also to the degree that you allow yourself to be planted in your local church. So you will reap from the words of God, the messages of God every Sunday. To the proportion that you take it for yourself and put Plant it in your own heart. What we have taught our people, and it's taken a long time, but it's going to happen quickly here. It's going to happen quickly here. To train our people. Find seed for yourself in every message. Come saying, where's my seed that I sow into my heart to grow from this message? Hey, come share a little bit about that, please, Pastor Christy. How that's changed your life. Well, just in short, I was the one, the lawless one. I only wanted to watch TBN and stay at home and read my books. And the Lord said to me, you are lawless. And then I was planted in heritage of faith uh, with Pastor John and Sharon. And the Lord said to me, Christy, you do not have the anointing of the fivefold to take yourself to the promised land. So I came to church and every message, every Sunday was step by step God's leading for me to the promised land and still. 
I was the lawless one, Pastor Sharon, light and loose in the body of Christ. Yes. yes. That was your own opinions. Oh, oh, full of my own opinions. Full, and wanted to be involved with everything everywhere. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Christians surf the web for prophecies. When we have it in our own house, it's already too much in my own house. It's everything that I can do just to keep up with the, with the, with the, with the words that are coming every Sunday and then the prophetic word. It's just to keep up with what's happening here and now. Hallelujah. Glory. So, you will reap from a local church in direct proportion that you allow yourself to be planted. Let me read to you what Rick Renner, he's of our company too. Rick Renner says about being planted. What are the front lines? The local church. I just took an extract from a book of his that's ministered to me, I believe it's called. It's the one about the, that one. No, it's not the light in the darkness one. It's the one about all the armor. I think it's that one. I'll get the, I I should have put it in better, my reference points. But he says here, what are the front lines? The local church. Thank God for Bible schools. Thank God for conventions. But they are not the battlefield. Apostle Rick Renner. They are not the battlefield. When you get into a local church, that is when the battle really begins. When you get into your local church, that is when the devil really starts throwing darts at you from everywhere. You will have every opportunity to pack your bags and split the scene. And this is what we teach. It's what I teach. It's part of my mandate. It's Pastor John does his part when, when the Lord called us together. Because I was in the corporate world with, in the first 15 years of my marriage. And we knew that God was going to call us one day to full-time ministry, even before we got married. But it happened at the time when God called Pastor John to go and speak to Brother Jerry. And my goodness, what a... That was the time of the shift for us. Where was I going with this, Pastor Christy? The battlefield. And so, it'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. Let me just see here. When you get into your local church, that is when the devil really starts throwing darts at you from everywhere. You will have every opportunity to pack, up your, pack your bags and split the scene. Oh, this is what I was going to say. We teach our people in our churches, even if you, when God sets you in, when he sets you in, that word in Corinthians, God sets into the body as he sees fit. That word set is such a beautiful Greek word. It it talks about when God lays you down to sink in, to sink with your whole being into He sets you, he places you, he puts you to sink down into the soil of that local church. Hallelujah. To draw nourishment. And we say, we've taught our people, even when you get upset, you stay set. In your local church, people, God has got people specially especially there for you that will rub you up the wrong way. He makes sure so that your development can be beautiful. Your development in the fruit of the spirit can just be magnificent. He will put people in that you love, that you like, but then he will put other people in there so that you can develop and you can grow in the fruit of the spirit. And you can learn forgiveness. And you can learn making allowances for others. And you can learn humility and not to be so proud and think you're all that. 
glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, and at at Heritage of Faith in South Africa, Pastor Justin, our people understand about the house anointing. There's There's a price that's been paid for the anointing in this house. And just because you're so magnificent and anointed in it, it's because you're tapping the house anointing. I'm tapping the house anointing. What a privilege. What a privilege. Glory. And how that makes us just be able to flow together, walk together, develop and mature together because that is God's plan. So Rick Rina says this. You will have every opportunity. There will be times when you will want to look for greener grass elsewhere. You will always look so good on the other side of the fence until you get there. (laughs) God has called you and me to fight right where God has planted us. And if it gets tough where we are, then this is our opportunity to develop endurance and stay put with other faithful ones. There's going to come a big shift. There's going to come a plantedness. In heritage of faith, like there's never been before. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know why I can be so confident to say that? Because it's the truth that I'm ministering to you. And the truth is going to set you free. You're going to know this truth for yourself. And you're going to repent and change your inner man to meet the will of God. And you're going to become so wanting to be blinded because it's the truth of God's word. It's going to set your whole life. It's going to set your life on course. And you're going to then, what's all of this got to do with the prayer conference? Sharon. Everything. You're going to be a corporate, powerful corporate prayer because you properly planted You have a revelation of it from God's word. So then you're going to come in that spirit of plantedness to the corporate prayer. Fully knowing that you are not the person of power, more power for the hour in prayer. But you're tapping the house anointing for prayer. Glory to God. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. And so here we go. You must join in with the other soldiers until the battle is over and won. And then he says, People have come to me and said, We're going to stay here with you, Pastor Rick, until Jesus comes. And they stayed for three months. To my dismay, they were the type of people who went from one church to another, offering pastors false hope and empty promises. When the revival didn't come after three months, they left and went somewhere else. Can you see, this is what Brother Rick Renner says, can you see why revival doesn't come to most places? It's because God can't pin people down long enough to give them A revival. Because revival comes to faithful ones. Faithful ones. Hallelujah. Planted ones. If God's people would settle down, revival would come. It's like Pastor John said last night. It's not. It's what, it's what we. It's what we have to leave out. We, you know, because we have that time that we have with you, and we want to be so careful with the Holy Spirit to give you everything that you need. I've done a good job of planted. I have. So I'm just going to see here. Where else do you want me to go now, Holy Spirit? All right. 
Oh, yes. This is, this is what he wants me to also say to you this morning. Now, Charles Finney was a revivalist. And he would go to local churches to bring revival. He didn't have his own private meetings. He went to local churches to work with local pastors and bring teachings. That, and he did not have revival in every church. And he speaks in his book, Lectures on Revival, how there were some churches that could have revival. He could have revival in and others he couldn't. And this is one of the things he said here. How to help your pastor and yourself. A church doesn't understand the ministry if it leaves the pastor to work alone. Hearing messages are the word of command calling the church to follow. If you aren't doing your part in this, then don't complain about your pastor if you don't see revival. Your lack of effort in receiving the messages as a command for you to follow is enough to block revival and awakening. There we go. Okay? Would you like me to read that to you again? Isn't it good? The messages are the word of command calling the church to follow. That's how we come to church. This morning is going to be a command for me. There's going to be some commands. There's going to be some things in the message that are going to help me bring correction to myself so I can self-correct, bringing instruction to me, all scripture. It's going to bring, it's going to bring me opportunity for repentance and to change and to turn this message coming this morning in this house where I'm planted from this leader. This leader. Okay, I'm just going where he's leading me. Hebrews 13, 17, Amplified Bible. Can we put this beautiful scripture up? It's beautiful to Jesus, so it's beautiful to me. Just verse 17. Hebrews 13, verse 17. Do you love it? Do you love it? Oh, I love it. Obey your spiritual leaders, not other people's spiritual leaders. You're supposed to have your ones that God gives you. Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them continually recognizing their authority over you. Oh, I tell you, a sheep loves this. A goat goes, but, 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 but. But a sheep loves this this verse. I've always loved this verse. Show me. Where's my spiritual authority? Where's, I was learning that. The Holy Spirit was teaching me that when I got married. I didn't know how to, you know, properly. I never really got taught properly how to be a wife. I went to the Word. I went to the Word and I went to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit would give me these beautiful scriptures in Colossians and Peter and, and in Ephesians. And wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as unto the Lord, glory, and love them. And out of the Amplified Bible, and prefer them and venerate and esteem them and defer to them and love and enjoy them exceedingly. For it was thus that Sarah did that to Abraham. And you will be now her true daughters if you do right and let nothing terrify you, not giving way to hysterical fears or letting anxieties unnerve you. It's when a woman wants to control her husband because she feels like you should be doing what I want you to do. No, Sarah didn't do that. Even when Abraham was out of line, she entrusted herself to God and God visited that king and said, you touch your, you touch your, I kill you. But the Amplified Bible says she called him Lord, Master, Leader, Authority. And, you, and then the Amplified says, and you will do, now do right. You will now do right. If you follow her example, glory to God. Hallelujah. Pardon my darling. 
But I, I defer to you. And I love you and I honor you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I learned from the word of God and the Holy Spirit helping me to do the word in my marriage. So then I could switch it to my shepherd over me. Obeying my spiritual leaders and submitting to them continually. Recognizing his, their authority over you for they are constantly keeping watch over your soul. Guarding your spiritual welfare. Guarding your spiritual welfare. As men who will have to render an account of their trust, God entrusts you to spiritual authority. And they have to render an account to him. That's why if you see your spiritual leader doing something wrong, that's not your time for you to leave. They are accountable to God for that. And we should be on our face before God and say, Lord, oh, I'm not talking to anybody in the congregation about him. I'm speaking to you for him. Because he's already spoken for by you. I'm not speaking about him to anybody. I remember the first time I was planted in my church. Such a love and an honor and a reverence and, a, and an honor for my, my pastor and my pastor's wife that I had. And I went to a, a, a meeting um, or sanctioned by our pastor, home cell group. And uh, I remember we were having coffee afterwards and there were these two ladies standing talking about my pastor's wife. And I thought, you can't be members. What are you doing here? To discover, no, they, they're regulars. And they're talking. And you know what the Holy Spirit said to me? Run. I said, can't I just walk quickly? He said, run. He told Joseph to run. Well, I, I, I think I just kind of did this, you know. Because they came to me afterwards. Because I just heard him say, Run. And they came to me afterwards and said, what, 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 what were you doing? What's up with that? I said, well, the Holy Spirit told me to run because you were talking about pastor that I love. And he taught me in the local church. He taught me in the local church. Glory. It's my growing, maturing ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, they are guarding your spiritual. And then we, as time went on, I, I found out, I had personal experiences where I was like, oh, oopsie, you know, I, you know, I thought you were more spiritual than that pastor. And the Lord said, oh, you want to take your rose-colored glasses off now, do you? You want to take your rose-colored glasses off now, do you? You want to have something to say about my servant? He taught me quickly. I tell you, he taught me quickly. I love my relationship with the Holy Spirit. I expect him to discipline me regularly. I yield. I think it's Hebrews or is it Romans that yield to the discipline of the Lord. I desire it and I yield to it and I love it. It was said of, of, of David that he was most excellent in the art of repentance. Most excellent in the art of repentance. And he would say, what's that whip doing hanging up on the wall? God should be beating me. One of the names of Father God is Jehovah Makeh, the Lord my smiter. Has he ever smitten you? I remember when we used to discipline Bryn and Garth. And I remember Bryn once said, it's not fair. We get hardings, you know. We get spankings. Because if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. That's it. It's God's word on it. And he said, and he said uh, it's not fair. 
Where, well, how do you get hidings, mom? I said, oh, my boy. Oh, my boy. Sometimes I would wish that he would rather be spanking my bottom than when he gets in my heart to show me and tell me. And he smites me in my heart. It's, it's like, oh, oh, Lord. But then he's so wonderful in that discipline. That just as quickly as the discipline is over between a, a parent and a child and that hiding is over. And it's, I'm sorry, mom. I'm sorry, dad. I'm sorry. Yes, my darling, of course. Kiss, makeup, it's gone. That's it. That's it. Glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? So do your part to let them do this with gladness and not with sighing and groaning. Come on. Do your part to let them do this with gladness and not with sighing and groaning, for that would not be profitable to you either. Right? It's a beautiful scripture. We can't be selective with what we want out of the word of God. You, want, you must want all of it and just all of it for every part of my life, Lord. So here's Charles Finney carrying on. Your lack of effort in receiving the messages as a command for you to follow is enough to block awakening. Be careful not to murmur about blunt, pointed preaching, especially if it seems directed at you. This is Charles Finney. Churches forget that the minister is only responsible to God. They want their pastor's sermons to never rebuke them, never to warn them, never to criticize them. If he bears down and exposes the sins prevailing in the church, they cry. Too personal and rebel against the truth. Now, this here's Charles Finney again. Don't call preaching too blunt because it exposes the faults of the church. There is no such thing as preaching too pointedly. No individual ever benefits from preaching unless he feels it addresses him personally oh please i come on a sunday address me personally god address me personally glory hallelujah i want to change i want to grow i want to mature i want to have a correction the apostle paul says to timothy timothy you must preach the word in season out season rebuke convince correct be unfailing in that. That's where I come to get my rebuke is out of the message. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When I read what the rabbis said about David that being excellent in the art of repentance, I said, me too. Me too. Just like that, you can be me too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No individual ever benefits from preaching unless he feels it addresses him personally. If church members claim it is wrong for a minister to preach so specifically, how can he do any good? No revival shall happen in such a church. Whom should he preach to if not to the people sitting in the pews? Whom should he preach to if not to the people sitting in the pews? Do you know what David said? One of the reasons he was a man after God's own heart. He said the temple is not for man, it is for God. So if we allow the Lord Jesus Christ to build a church according to his pattern, according to his word, it, it's the house is for the Lord. That's just how Pastor John and I have been. We are not here to tickle your ears. We will not do that. Your ears are itching to hear one thing. We are responsible to God to get messages from heaven and bring them to you. And they'll be full of comfort. They'll be full of encouragement. They'll be full of love. But they'll also be full of correction. There'll be some rebuke at some times. And that's how we build the house. Not for man, but for the Lord. 
because we fear God first. We do not come to bring you and put you on a diet that you want. God knows a congregation. He knew exactly what to write to the church at Thyatira. Different to the church at Laodicea. Different to. He knows everybody in a congregation. He knows exactly what message to bring on a Sunday. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory. Father, I pray right now for myself and for my plantedness to become more beautiful to you. Come, let's pray. Let pray for yourself as you're sitting there. Robe sere me karaba sote kere maramo. Show me, Father. Robe sere bakature bere bara shore me. Maramantu resentika oreko tekorono no moshke brese matakote arose arose. I want to be so beautifully planted, Lord. Rese matako rese matako ekrebidaga ekrebidaga ukrebidaga. She ore me te paramas. I'm talking. My spirit speaks to you about my plantedness, Lord. Kado ene minama eshkefre risa mote risa mote kete prava tule pereka o shebro o shebro broche me me pepa o shebro boporo me popa o shebro bropo mo me popa o shebro bropo mo me popa eshele sika rote se nete karina o kere mete paranina e kere mete maranina o kere brada gude gishka yele kra yele kra ba katuke de bere vara kushke bere vara si oh yalada. Oh, Yalada. Wa sumo. Wa sumo. Oh, Shemese. And now let's pray for all the people of Heritage of Faith Crowley that must have the fullness of the revelation of being planted. Because it's as we get the basics right that we can walk in the fullness of corporate prayer people. The Lord said this to me one day, the prayers of the lawful are awful. The prayers of the lawful are awful, full of awe in hell. I mean, really, if you come to think of it, here you are, for example... You're born again, you're not planted, and you're binding everything, boy. And you're praying for the nations. And you're not even planted. We have to get the the majors right with God first. Right? We have to get that right first. We've got to be exercised and practiced in it. I said... uh, you're going to get this. You're getting this. You're getting this so quickly now, right? You're getting it so quickly. I wanted to just give you an example of something that I take out of a Sunday message. Um, let me just see here. No, I've got it here in my, in my journal. All right. I just, I write down things out of the message so that I can sow my seed. Mark 4. The sower sows the word. I want a seed out of the message to sow into my heart quickly. The Lord said to me, so enjoy my word. Quickly, so quickly, so quickly. Because my next commandment is coming on the next Sunday. So quickly, sow it. Find your seed. There's a psalm that says, they go forth weeping for their need for seed. And they shall doubtless come again, bringing their sheaves with them. If you do not sow the word into your heart, there's nothing to grow, to bring fruit in your life. Hallelujah. You cannot have a harvest without sowing seed. And the seed is the word of God. If you do not believe that the seed is incorruptible, the word of God is incorruptible seed that your heart is tailor made for it to grow in, then you need to just go to Jesus and say, Jesus, you have to give me the parable of Mark 4. Because Jesus said, if you don't understand this parable of Mark 4, the sower sows the word into their heart and it can bear 30, 60 and 100 and Satan will come to try to steal the word. If you don't believe that the word, the sower sows the word. The sower sows Jesus' words, God's words that he brings to me on a Sunday. 
And he'll bring them personally to me on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But the word especially he brings from the messenger. He sends a messenger with a message for my deliverance. You're hopping on this a bit. You're hopping on this a bit. God is hopping on it. He wants you so planted and so flourishing and thriving. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, my victory is in my praise. It was Sunday the 6th of October. He brought a scripture that became my confession during the week. And now it won't leave me. God is my strength. Though there's no fruit on the fig tree. Though there's no results of my faith yet. Though there's no oxen in the stool. Yet will I exult in the victorious God of my salvation. I speak that. I sow that scripture that I got on a Sunday into my heart in the, in the week. And then I do it. You see? He's the victorious God of my salvation. He's my invincible army. He's my personal bravery. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So then I, I decree that. So that when I have no visible show yet of the word of God manifesting, that's working in me. It's, the word is working mightily in me. Hallelujah. Because I heard it on Sunday. I'm already saying it and sowing it on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yo, you can at least just write down one seed that you're going to sow into your heart on a Sunday morning. Just one seed. Just one. Oh, can grow up into a big tree. Praise. He made this statement, and I use it now when I praise God. Praise is tapping into the supreme divine energy in me. I make a choice of my will to show you my desire by praising you. When I praise you, you say there is no restriction to what comes to you, Sharon. Unlimited, unlimited energy comes to you and starts to flow through. And so your soul will prosper and change your world around you. That's just one statement that I took from the 6th of October message that Pastor John brought. Do you, are you, can you see how simple this is? That you don't have to be on information overload? That everything you need is in your local church? Hallelujah. Can you see? Glory. How we've been feeding all over the place and getting indigestion. And thinking, is this the deal? Because I'll feed a little bit off there and a little bit there and a little bit from this and this when it's all in the house. It's all in the house. Why, whom should he preach to if not to the people sitting in the pews? How can God say anything if he isn't specific to the people whom he addresses through his minister? Acts 2, 37 and 38, this comes from preaching. This is the King James Version. I think it was Peter that had been preaching. Yes, Peter had been preaching. And with the preaching, when they heard the preaching, they were pricked in their heart. See, that's the smiting of God. He will, they were pricked in their heart. They were, another translation says they were pierced. Pierced, that's how... You see, and said to Peter, what shall we do? What shall I do, Lord? What shall I do? Because this message has pricked me to my heart. And Peter said, repent, repent. Change your inner man to meet the will of God. Whatever I preach to you, line up with it. Whatever I said, do that. I remember the once and before we started the church, we were, still in the offices at Jerry Savar Ministries, and we, there were a whole lot of pastors that were divinely connected to Brother Jerry. And once every six weeks, we would give them a meal. We would invite them to JSMR for a meal. We would have a venue, and they would come for a meal. And then we would also minister the word to them. And um, I remember we ministered so powerfully that morning, that Saturday morning, on what praying in the Holy Ghost will do for you in terms of you finding the plan of God for your life, that you speak the wisdom in a mystery. And uh, this, this couple had to see us. They had to see us afterwards. They had to see us. 
And so we said, all right, come to our house. And they told us their whole long story. And I remember we went quite silent. And Pastor John, probably being the more gracious one, just, I said, um, I called them by their names. I said, that that we preached this morning, this is perfect. This is, God preached it exactly for you. This is what you have to do, is what we said in the message. And I remember, they, it's like, like a bullfrog on a log in a hull storm, batting their eyes, eyelids, going, oh, you mean we must do that? <laughs> yes. Yes. Because we can't tell you whether you should do this or do that in your life and what's this, this. We ministered the message specially for you. The message this morning happened to be on praying in the Holy Ghost to find God's plan for your life. Hallelujah. Hey, baby. Glory to God. Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. It's a multifunctional, multidimensional tool. We just edify ourselves. Charge our spiritual battery. Serebruga. Perebarashku. Sekre. Verege. Debatoku. Tukushke. Merebaraki. Sheregara. Sheregara. Gure. Veshke. Berebara. Bore. Beregi. Shebere. Varago. Kepere. Garago. Shkepe. Sefte. Pepere. Pala. Bore. Beregi. Shoporo. Kravo. Kutepe. Shekereka. Shepere. Kravo. Kutukulu. Kerebesha. No. Kutuku. Shefrisa. Shebrebada. Gada. Vude. Brevega, Katalu, Emerema, Tokutukush, Kemereba, Shekeresa, Shokurusa, Secreste, Secreste, Karamato, Kutukuru Boshe, Ye, Shefele Barabu, Kepeke Latano, Yen de Greste, Yen de Greste, Yen de Greste, Karagute Fete Karago, She Crevaru, She Crevaru, Crudo Butu, Putu, 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 Pe, She Mesketantu, Shefreste, Paragitu. Paragitu kuturun de peste taro vuru shukru. Shebresita. Shebresita. Okay. Babes, I can go. I can go to the work of an apostle now. And do some wonderful eye-opening stuff about that. Or I can go. I can go to with the living voice. To the living voice. And we'll do the work of an apostle at the next opportunity that I have. And then lead the people into that. Right, how much time do I still have left, Pastor Justin? I've got 35 minutes, right? Okay. You want to stand a bit? Just let's stand a bit and just, hallelujah. Let's just raise our hands. And let's just say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you, Lord. Just, oh, I love you. I love you, Lord. Love your word. Thank you for bringing us this word today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to you, God. Praise you. Thank you for bringing us great light. Thank you for bringing us clarity today. Thank you for making it easy for us to feed. Easy for us to feed, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Easy for us to be planted, Lord. We see it. We get it, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. You may be seated. This is a one of my favorite things to minister on, and uh, all right, so I'm going to just put this away, and that, right, there's a very wonderful anointing, house anointing, that I'm very privileged to stand in. And minister under. <sighs> Glory to God. Such a privilege for me to be able to teach on this subject of praying in tongues. God shifted things for me in 2012. Yeah, 2012. 
um, it shifted my personal prayer life for me too. And uh, the reason the Lord is wanting to bring this part of the teaching to you is because faith comes by hearing the word. Faith comes by hearing the word of God on prayer. Faith comes by hearing the word of God on finances. Faith comes by hearing the word of God on healing. Faith comes by hearing the word of God on your personal relationship with him. You say, the word of God says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Oh, faith comes. I say that. I draw near to you. You draw near to me. Faith. I have faith in that. Glory to God. So faith comes to you by you hearing, you hearing the word of God. So a couple of years ago, let me just see here. I have this whole file full of revelations of the Lord Jesus. He changed our speech, a new creature, a new sound. A new creature, a new sound, a new language, a new environment, the local church. Glory. I just have to be specific. Let's see here. Maybe I should start with this. Because this is something that you, it's not so much going to be taught, it's going to be caught. Okay. This is just something of what he gave me. Ancient language. Oh, excellent ancient language. Oh, beloved ancient language of mine. The ancient of days has always spoken. They, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have always spoken. They have a sound. He thunders, he roars, he shouts, he sings. These are all from scripture. He speaks, he sings, he sounds. It's all pure. It's all powerful. This is his time now. He is all sound now. Adam had the same speech, the same sound created in the image of God, the same song like God, the same power on earth. And one day they heard a new sound and they listened and they followed. And the speech and sound and song they had before, they had no more. The beloved ancient language they lost. The beloved ancient language was lost. So they lost their way on that day. From that day they lost their way. But then one day it came again. From heaven to earth. The ancient sound was heard again. And from that day men could find their way once again. And they could walk from then in the ancient paths once again. And not be lost but found. Hallelujah. And so that's talking about on the day, on the day when the Holy Spirit came, there came a sound from heaven. There came a sound from heaven. That's Acts chapter 2. Let's go there. Acts chapter 2. I think it's verse 1. Glory to God. Praise you, Jesus. Yes. Okay, I found my place now. Acts 2, verses 1 to 4. Acts 2, verses 1 to 4, King James. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, that 
tongue is like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Right? And you just have a picture of that. And you have a picture of that. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to go to Weast, the Weast version. If you can find the Weast, Acts chapter 2, the same portion of Scripture. Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost was in process of being fulfilled, they were all together in the same place. And suddenly there came an echoing sound out of heaven, as of a wind borne along violently, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues that had the appearance of fire. Okay, now this word tongues is a Greek word glossa, which means language. It's the same word, glossa, that's used for the word language in the King James anywhere. Glossa. So we can put it like this. There appeared to them languages. There appeared to them languages that had the appearance of fire. And these languages being distributed among them. And one of those languages took up a position upon each one of them. A language took up a position on the 120. A language took up a position. The language took up a position. Glory to God. And there, and, and, and there appeared to them languages that had the appearance of fire. These languages being distributed among them. And one of those languages took up a position upon each of them. And they were all controlled by the Holy Spirit. And began to be uttering words in languages different from their own native language. And different from those spoken by the others, even as the Spirit kept giving them ability to speak forth, not in words of everyday speech, but in words belonging to dignified, elevated discourse. So Pastor John's been speaking to you about words, words, there's words, I give him his word back. But then there's these words. Then there's these words of my ancient language, dignified, elevated discourse that I have with God, with these words. 1 Corinthians 14 says, when I pray in an unknown language, my spirit prayeth, my spirit prays, hallelujah, glory to God. So God restored because man lost his voice in the fall. He had the same voice as God, the same sound as God. He spoke the same language as, as language as God. God is the Lord of language. If we see one day and we hear the sound and God has got some kind of way that we can see when he created the earth, he didn't say in English or in Italian, light be. He said, spoke in the ancient language. Light B could have been something like Grueshimika Doris. Land separates from the sea. Irisadikani Ash Kudipa. We're gonna hear. He's gonna let us in on that. Gonna let us watch a video of it. DVD. Okay. So that language. Because he prophesied that he was going to restore it. He, he prophesied it in Zephaniah. He told them. He told them, I'm going to do this. Zephaniah 3 verse 9. Can you put that up, please? Thank you so much for working so wonderfully. Zephaniah 3 verse 9, Amplified Bible. Is it up? Zephaniah 3 verse 9. Amplified Bible. Okay. Let's have a look at that. For then changing their impure language, I will give to the people a clear and pure speech from pure lips. It was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. Our heavenly ancient language is pure and clear and pure 
so that we can talk to God, call upon him, speak to him. Hallelujah. To serve him with one unanimous consent and one united shoulder. That's why the more we pray in the spirit, even together, yeesh. That's why I, oh, oh. hey, Justin, I mean, I just do that to party, spiritual party. Because in a prayer meeting, we can do that. On a Sunday morning, we don't do that. But at a prayer meeting, I will, for example, say, we're praying now. We're praying now for the things let me just think of what I can do. We're praying now for the things that Pastor John must do in the next few months or the next time. Or I can say, we're praying now for the prayer that's going to be organized and established at, Fort, at Heritage Crowley. The prayer that's going to be organized and established, because that's how he gave it to us. Organize it and establish it so that it can increase and intensify. Organize and establish corporate prayer so that it can increase and intensify. And then I'll say, okay. I'll say, da, because I pray with all these people that came with us. And I'll say, da, will you pray in your heavenly language for corporate prayer? Will you speak to the Father? Will you let your spirit speak to the Father? about the establishing of corporate prayer here in heritage of faith Crowley. Then I just want to hear her. I'm not praying in tongues while she's praying in tongues because it is magnificent to me. I sometimes have prayer meetings like that and I just go through all the prayers because I love to hear this ancient sound. I love to hear their spirit speak to God. Zora ndeke fe sondo ra ke stemra poto ke lende to vrosse repeba te lenke to vosso ko cresta lendo fra kinda bravas to koshe lo so ronde bere kende bravaste o renda da baka lo tova shota vasi shende rotonde di lipata ko rende bresa u karande pe Sande fresunde che rende bosova se scende o recondo vas de corrotto lande sovra cande se pesciande sova saca soro che lembre cazzenda rastova che rendo se lembre o ieta vasselo o rende o ma se ve rotonde caleve o sande cresso landa fra se che so chassa chosso scende co I just I want to hear what God's listening to because God's already interpreted that prayer it's already resounding it's already on its trajectory path straight to the throne of God and I know God heard that and God's got the interpretation I don't have to have it because it's a prayer meeting the interpretation's going to come it goes into the bowls of heaven that prayer and then God tips it he tips it into brother Ju- pastor Justin's heart at the right time this is how you're going to do it this is how you this is how it's going to happen this is how it's going to happen hallelujah hallelujah oh mabaka mabaka oh let's wash oh, see how it activates you just to hear your brother's beautiful your sister's beautiful ancient voice oh wow i just don't you love that glory to god all right well now i'm going to ask i am going to ask cuz i love to hear the men pray to the sounds the sounds the ancient sound i just say let your spirit speak to god eric just let your spirit speak to god we want to agree with you with our spirit
you want to stand and do that, I don't mind. About the establishing of the corporate prayer here. That's what your spirit is going to talk to God about now. Just let your spirit speak in your own tongue. Grete ke beste komoto ke. Inana este ke besto korete ke manaka. Ebro doko besto korete ke manaka de ki basto ko. Kinana ka basta ke moro ko boro korete ke manaka basta kro. Brara ke basto ko boro ko. Brora ke mete ki misti kirete ki manaka. Ekro to ko moste inene ki besti kinete. I ke masto ko te ke masta ka mana ko roto ko rote ki rote ki baraga. Brete ke bosto, ine ki misti ki masto ko, brete ke basta ka rada ka boroko. Brote ki basta ki rete ki baraka ka rada ka mana ka. I ke rete, roko rete ki mana ka. Roto ki misti ki rete ki mana ka. It's like a blanket that just, isn't it beautiful? It's spiritual, you see. This is how we know each other after the spirit. Sha. Sha. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's holy. It's a holy language. You know what John G. Lake says about praying in tongues? Never pray in tongues. With, never speak about speak in tongues without the fear of the Lord. Because it's holy. It's my ancient language. God knows what I'm saying. When I speak to him about the corporate prayer in this place and I go, I I Ramako, my spirit resukutu presho. It's pure speech. It's clear, it's clean, it's perfect, it's clean. It's wonderful. Hallelujah. Oh, let's keep praying for the establishment of corporate prayer. The sudden, quick establishment of the corporate prayer. Let your spirit speak to God about that specifically, Kathy. Lord Ravisi Atomana Katishi Lea Romana Marco Uniti Tiana Maya Soto Ravai Ashiti Arama Ola Kodomanai Ia loro vo sota makati i roho na nakati ba makala karasi i o soto ma anini anama ayasi i roho shototo i loro ma ya ti si ti anama ya koto na malaki raha na ayasi i loho rovo so ho loro vo so ho loro vo si ti ama Kotona nai hi alaka yati hi asoto ma ma yakati si atoma nakati si. Thank you, Lord. I'm so glad I'm having a mental bypass because when you pray in an unknown language, it's not obvious to your understanding. Thank God I can bypass. I have an understanding bypass because my understanding is so limited. So limited. So I, God's created this way. I can just have this bypass. And in a prayer meeting, we don't have to have the interpretation of it on a Sunday when we have a tongue and interpret. But here we can have a tongue. And no, I don't know what you're saying, but my spirit knows. Your spirit's speaking. He's hearing the answer's there. Because it's pure, it's clear, it's clean. It's powerful. Because it's the language he gives, has given me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to do a little bit of instruction here. 
Don't, I don't want you to stop, Sharon. I just want to do a little bit of instruction here. I want you to notice that, uh, that as Pastor Sharon is doing this, this is not a free-for-all for everybody to start speaking in tongues. The facilitator, facilitator of the corporate prayer meeting is facilitating who gets to pray. The job of the people that are sitting in the audience that are praying is to hook up your faith with the person that is praying. Now, when the time comes for everybody to pray in the Spirit together, then you release your faith with your prayer language based on the, ma- the subject matter that we are talking about. So the facilitator, if it will be Pastor Justin, whoever else he might de- delegate the, the prayer meeting to, if we are praying for corporate prayer to be established in Fort Worth Crowley, here at Heritage of Faith, if that's what we are praying about, then we are, then as Pastor Sharon's been doing, is release your prayer language in faith to pray that this is established. We are not praying for someone to be healed. We are not praying for some uh, political circumstances to change. We are focused on one subject. We're focused that God will move in this area. So this allows us to be focused in what we pray for. And when we join our prayer in faith together, this is where the power of, of our agreement and our unity comes into order. And so sometimes the facilitator will be led, as Pastor Sharon was, read, was led right now, to call on people and say, pray. Let your voice be heard. Pray. Now this takes some practice for you to hook up your faith with someone's prayer language. It takes some practice. So if I am up here and I start to pray in my natural language, and I'm praying for Brother Jerry, wherever he is now, say, Brother Jerry, um, we pray that the Holy Spirit rests upon you with might, and with power, and with anointing. And now I begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Now you can sit and listen to me or you can hook your faith up with what I'm saying. So, so now you get into agreement with me. Hook your faith up. You're hooking your faith up. You're focusing your mind. You're focusing your spirit. And the Word of God says in the book of Corinthians that the spirit is subject to the prophet. That means you have the way that you have control of how you let your spirit man respond to the way the Holy Spirit leads. So you hook up your spirit. You hook up your faith. Sombrende bregisho. Now join me in praying in the Holy Spirit with that same faith. Join me. We pray for Brother, Brother Jerry to be refreshed in the Spirit right now. Shombrende groshte kremase kikatobo. Yembrendo shokolo krista bra. Remendon tishta bakyanto kose kelebrata labra. Lombreme shekintro stekebrenda nabateme. Romon shte bakahemendi kindo brodo stekilavrata. Comprenda manish to mbrende gisa kantra moko. Cobre shtebre giso hombrende shekene mantra mato romonte. Lemonos to kono montre. Rimambo ko shikita yebo sono mono. Stay focused now. Stay focused. Now you don't let your mind wander now. It's easy to let your mind wander. You stay focused and hooked up with your prayer language. Shembran grindron dreshte brigi gogo sokonda. Libote ki mayam broshe veregista. Lendotomo sokontre makase na mende remendo. Hosha kamana mesana bote. Lito stibiti gita mbrandeste kembroste kenamata. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Now, this is part of what we have learned that makes corporate prayer successful. We keep it, so we've been teaching because we've been laying a platform to give a structure of how you can pray. But when we run prayer meetings, we go for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes, and we keep it moving along like this. We keep it moving along like this and we find out who's got the anointing, who's got the next thing to pray for. And and then when the anointing is upon that person and when that person is inspired by the Holy Spirit to pray, then we recognize, the facilitator recognizes where the anointing lies. 
Hallelujah. So I know that Pastor Justin has, is motivated, he's inspired by the Holy Spirit to have prayer as an established pattern in the church here in Fort Worth. So if I wanted to say, let's keep praying for prayer to be established and ordered and organized so that it increase and intensify in its power, in its ability, in, its, in the way that it can do its work, then I would immediately, just because I know he's spiritual, he's the leader, and he's motivated, I would ask him to pray. So I'm going to ask him to pray. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the prayers that have gone up. We thank you for the things that our eye hadn't seen or ear heard, nor the things that are our heart, but they are being revealed to us by your spirit. So, Father, I thank you. It's being revealed to us exactly how to to maneuver and to, to manufacture what you want done in organizing and establishing so this prayer can increase and intensify. So, Father, I thank you that our ears are open unto, oh, unto heaven. Our ears are open unto heaven to hear exactly what you want to establish in this body in this house because you have called this to be a house of prayer in order for it to be a place of glory in order to be a people of influence so we set our faith as a church we set our we set our faith as one unified body that 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 prayer will rise in this house prayer will increase in this house prayer will be established in this house and it will increase and it will intensify i thank you that we are coming up as a level because there's things that need to be done in this hour in this day in this season for jesus to come back so, Father, we thank you that we are one voice, one unified family, and we thank you for it. Brosh te kere baya, brosh te tele boko te rabaya, brish to rakita, brendele boko shera, bromandele kito, rosh te kida, brandele boko hi, ate sho, donde shti kinda, brakito rabaya, de shingle rabo, brandila bakai, yos te kisha, ito lo na maya, yiko ramaya, Dosho doko yera ito randeso brandela boko bradilo boko ste dala stunglona dide kayo no mo mo ramande de de kisto bo shakela ite standele bo brokaya de le isho zonde le reba ye kora baba bake yo te shinga la baya ye to shora baya mm de le shtiki Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Your spirit. Praise you, Jesus. Are you not revived in the way that you feel like you want to pray? Are you not charged and energized? Because you hooked up your faith with what he was praying. Hallelujah. Now, will you take this energy? And if he was facilitating the prayer meeting, he would say, now pray with me in the Holy Ghost. So let's pray together in the Holy Spirit. Hook up your prayer now. Hook up your faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Libro se dre macho compresa kama tanto to moti kene me senta Hoba she beti ge se gena mata Hallelujah 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 Praise you Jesus So now I want to just go back to what Pastor Sharon's been teaching It's important that when whoever's facilitating the prayer meeting can count on planted people to pray because you don't want to be choosing someone that's not planted. You want someone who's got the spirit of this house, who's got the, who's got the, 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 the knowing that I'm called here, I'm purposed here, I'm assigned here, I'm a son in the house, I'm a, I'm a person who's called to be, to be serving here. Now that person can pray accordingly. If, if you just choose anybody to pray, they may not know what's going on in the house, so they may pray anything. Just a few things that, that I think we should say here, Sharon, then we can close. I know there's a lot to say. Yes, I know. But, but this is important. You know, if you don't get chosen to pray, that doesn't mean to say your presence is not valuable. 
If you don't get chosen not to pray, that doesn't mean to say that your praying together with everybody else is not necessary. Exactly. Hallelujah. One of the things that Charles Finney says is that oftentimes the role of the facilitator is to recognize where there is an anointing on someone to pray and then work with the fire. Yes. Because what you need in prayer meeting is fire, fire. starters. It's the language of fire. You need fire starters fire. because you don't want a dead prayer meeting. You no. come to pray because you want a live prayer meeting. Sure. So you want somebody to start the fire and then have other people run with the fire. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so that's why the pastor or the leader of the prayer meeting has got to know the people that he can turn to. That have the fire of personal prayer. Yes. That come into the church alive ready, with fire. And when they prayer. come with their alive fire in the church, that's what they come to do. That's exactly right. Hallelujah. That's exactly right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Glory. God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. We're done with time. Yeah. Three minutes. Yes, three minutes. Yeah. You want to say something? I did want to mention that we really got taught by Kenneth Hagen when Jesus visited him, um, plans, purposes, and pursuits. You know, that um, when people are busy praying, even though the spiritual energy is rising, not to clap. Because you, we can't hear the person praying because somebody's clapping next to you. And so, you know, that Dad Hagen, Jesus said, people have gotten clap happy. And so that's really helped us in our prayer meetings where it's part of we consider one another. So I'm wanting to hear what you're praying, even though you are praying so powerful and the Spirit of God is using you and flowing through you. Possessing your vessel, giving you that utterance on another level. I don't want someone next to me clapping. I want to hook my spirit up with you. So it's just he helped us with that. It's a distraction. And that's why we don't have all this walking around everywhere. And, you know, we sit together to pray like this. It just works for us. It really works for us. So, as I said before, uh, there is there is no... Uh, right or wrong about this. But what we have discovered, as we have learned over the last 10, 12, 14 years to pray this way, that every week we have hundreds of people that come and pray. That's more than most churches we know. Number two, when people come and pray, they come to prayer and they don't want to leave prayer because we keep it short, we keep it on topic, we change the topics. We know exactly what we're going to be praying for. We, we connect with and we recognize people that are planted in the church. We recognize where they are prepared and ready to come and pray. And because we keep it short, we keep it powerful, we keep it connected, we keep people connected with their faith for a period of time, we found we have a tremendous results of prayer. Yes. And so we're not saying that you have to do anything that we do. But, if, but we don't know anybody else that has got a really successful prayer meetings going in their churches. Yeah. Too much. Yeah. And we learned, oh, sorry, I have a mark. We learned from Charles Finney where he says he speaks about obstacles to prayer meetings because he went to all of them in all the local churches where he went. He says obstacles to prayer meetings is people who come in late in the prayer meeting. So this is Charles Finney. Much singing in a prayer meeting, prayer meetings that are too long. So we learned from, from people that had prayer meetings, a lack of union in prayer. When one prays, the others don't follow. Their thoughts wander off. Their hearts don't join in to say amen, even if their lips do it. It's as bad as one person praying for a thing and another praying against it. Neglect of personal prayer. And then it says poorly conducted prayer meetings often do more harm than good. Um, so, you know... He, he talks here about too long. Oh, and then he also says, and some uh, people that pray too long, it's everybody wishes they would keep quiet. Those are the words he uses. People in a corporate prayer meeting that pray too long and they pray a whole sermon and everybody wishes they would stop. 
Yeah. So those are some obstacles. So we've got, we've got things, you know, all of our things that God will show you. Everything to help is, yes. and I, th- I believe we're going to get to everything, babe. We're well, not going to leave well, one we, stone we're see, We're going to see how we get there. Yeah. We're going to see how we get there. But for today, we're done. Yes. Thank you for giving Thank us you. your attention. Thank, Thank you. you for being such we'll a wonderful group of people. Thank you. Thank you. You've been wonderful. Thank you for coming wonderful. out today. Really appreciate it. Glory to God. Pastor you Justin. You've been awesome. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for receiving. Glory. Thank you, Pastor Shannon. Man, Thank what a marvelous time. Thank you. Oh, Thank, Thank you, Father. You. Man. Um, you know, you keep saying this booklet. Um, and that they have, um, what we're going to be doing um, is they sent that into a, in a digital format. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to make it available. Hopefully the first part of next week, you'll be able to go on our website and you'll be able to download load that. So you can print it out. You'll be able to go through it. You'll have, you'll have what they have. And, and so just to make, make that available to you. Um, so that will be towards, I'm not going to say Monday. I don't want to guarantee, but, but anyway, sometime next week we'll have a link on our website where you can, where you can uh, download that, put it on your device or whatever. So, man, what an awesome time. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow morning. And so you're, you're, you're both going to be tag teaming both services. You think so? Okay. All right. Well, you be led. So this is, this is your house, a home away from home. And so, so they'll, they'll be in both services tomorrow, doing both services tomorrow and, uh, tag teaming. So, um, man, it's going to be, a, it's going to be an excellent time. Amen. So you receive something. Wow. Father, we thank you for the things that we've received. I thank you, Father, for the things that you're continuing to speak to our hearts long after we leave here today, Father, and the things that from the days and weeks to come, the things that you'll continue to deposit. I thank you that this was a productive and this was a fruitful time. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. We love you. Have a great rest of your Saturday, and we'll see you tomorrow morning.